வச்சு காட்டுறதுக்குங்க this exercise we are learning how to develop a variation of kamis with yoke with the use of basic kamis block we learned how to make the basic kamis block we are going to use the same block to develop the variation this kamis have a yoke till the chest line and it flared at the bottom developed by the slash and spread method with a boat neck sleeveless and with a narrow hem the closure or the plaquettes can be designed at the center back at the shoulder or as per the design now we are going to develop the pattern first we have to take a white sheet and pin on the cock table and take the basic block place it on the white sheet and trace the kamis at neck shoulder and armhole trace the armhole dot and the bust notch and trace center front and side seam to the required length trace the center front and the dots can you use tracing wheel to trace the dots we should place weight in order to avoid the slippage and the pin up pins can also be used to position the pattern in place take the basic pattern out and draw all the lines like chest line waist line hip line and bottom line and draw the dot first take the outline two leg side there legs then draw the in, in center line and draw the arm hold dot now we finish drawing the outline and write the pattern information and write all the details including name of the pattern size tie number front back everything now we are tracing back back kamis pattern as the same as front we should place the pattern on your white sheet 
we are tracing it again to develop the working pattern. See the block pattern cannot be used to develop directly for working. The block should remain as the same for the reference of everything. So on every working pattern developments, we should trace the block into your working pattern sheet as the white sheet. Then we have to do the variations. As the same as the front, we are also tracing the basic lines and outlines as the neckline, shoulder line, armhole, side seams, and center line to the required length. It is very important to mark the basic line notches. As the same as the front, we also trace the waist dot. It is the fish dot. How to trace with the tracing wheel and mark the waistline and the tip of the dots and remove the block again draw all the outline of the pattern start with the basic line waistline hip line bottom line Side C, chest line, and the yoke line. And write all the information as we return in the front as name of the pattern, style number and size and your grain line has to be marked and the, it has to be marked with a fold. The fold can be designed according to the closure or the opening placket. If there is a full open, it can be cut too. If it is, if there is no opening, it will be on fold. The center front line is being marked as on fold. And the grain line is being marked separately for the yoke and for the body. And tracing of dot, draw all the lines for the dot also. And the reference information has to be there. This is being given. The yoke is being done till the chest line. So the information is being given separate separately till the yoke once and then at the body also. Now we have to start cutting the pattern from the front. We have started to cut at the armhole and shoulder line. The cut should be exactly on the line and there shouldn't be any ruptures. Clean cutting is necessary. You should make practice how to make the cutting properly. And cut on the exact outline of the side seam.
and at the center front. We can use scissor or cutter to cut the pattern. Cut on the straight line without the ruptures. And cut the bottom line. and uh, the neckline. Now the exact block has been traced into your white sheet. Now we are going to work on it as a working pattern. The same thing has to be happened for the back also. We are going to cut on the outline for the center back line. Cut as straight and at the bottom line. Whatever the length you mark for the front has to be followed for the back also because the front length and the back length has to be equal. So that has to be marked in your basic pattern itself how much the length is seen from the waistline or from the hip line. The same thing has to be followed. Now we are cutting on the side seam. Under the armhole, armhole should be clean and it has to be cut on the exact line without the ruptures. If you feel difficulty to go around along with the curve, then you can slash the fabric paper little out and it will be easy to cut on its position. Cut the shoulder as the straight line and the armhole and the neck as a proper curve which is being as per the draft. Now we finish tracing of the block into your white sheet. The thin sheet will be easy to work. So this block is going to act like a working pattern. And we have the yoke. The yoke length has been desired after the chest line. So the yoke is being cut on the chest line for the front as well as for the back. Now the yoke has been separated and you have to check the side seam of the front and back yoke as to be the same. When the line is not perfect as a straight, this side length on be proper. So you should check the length of the side seam whether it's been matching. And uh, the dot is the dot is is been extending. You have to be careful. And is there any excess at the side seam also to be trimmed as per the size. Now we are going to close the dot. Dot length has to be increased up to the chest line. And fold and crease the dot at the center line. And 
try to close it. That means one leg of the dart is going to be placed on the other leg by closing the dart intake. Now we are going to see that the cupping will happen when you are closing the dart. So it has been eliminated and it is closed. So by closing the dart, you are eliminating the darts. Close the dart by placing the dart leg one on the other and fix it with the cellar tape. Now closing dot has been done. Only we are going to do that in the front because we need to create a room for the bust. So it has the front has the armhole dot and the waistline dot as a fish dot. Now we are marking the neck, boat neck. It can be away by 2 inch from the shoulder at neck. The front neck is been deepened by half an inch to 3 fourth of an inch. And the same neck width of 2 inch is been marked at the back and it is been dropped at the center back by half an inch to three fourth of an inch. Draw the boat neck with the use of a tool of a French curve. After forming the curve at the front and the back, we can start cutting the neck. So we modified the neck from the close round neck to the boat neck. The neck width is being opened for 2 inch. The neck drop is half an inch to 3 fourth inch at the front as well as the back. Our front yoke of the back and front is being done. Now we are going to make a flared bottom by Drawing a straight line at the middle of the dart and draw on another line at the middle of dart to the side seam. Now the two straight line has been marked on the pattern of bodies. Start to slash from the bottom till the chest line because we cut the yoke on the chest line. It should not be separated. It should not be separated. You have to slash it from the bottom till the chest, till before the chest line. The next step we have to spread the pattern the same thing can be done for the back also by drawing a straight line at the center of the dart till the till the bottom line and one more line can be taken from the middle of side seam to dart. Again you have to square down that point till the bottom line.
Now apply the slash and spread method, cut from the bottom through the center line of the dart and it should end little below the chest line. It should not be separated. Same thing to be done on the sideline also. Start cutting from the bottom and end the cutting little below the chest line. So we have slashed the pattern Again, we need to take the fresh sheet and uh, place your bottom part as, as in straight grain at the center front into another sheet. Now we have to fix push pins to position the panels. You should spread at the bottom. There should be even distribution or little extra as per the design. We should distribute the slashes and allow allow the spread. As per the design, the spread at the bottom can be 4 inches or 5 inches and it's up to the design also and fix the pattern, the slashed pattern onto the white sheet with a cellar tape in order to avoid the slippage and each panel has to be fixed along to the white sheet as per the required spread. After spreading it, you should fix all the panels firmly with the cello tape and draw the outline, outline of side seam with a straight scale from the top to bottom. side. There will be little extra at the side seams when you are drawing a straight line from top to bottom of the sides. And draw the bottom shape as a continuous curve from the center front to the side seam. At the center front, it has to be perpendicular to the center front at least for 3 inches, then the gradual curve will start. You can use the hip curve to draw the bottom curve or if you are being efficient to draw the curve by yourself, you can draw it as in curve.
the waste is also be called and true when we are spreading at the bottom automatically the waste will become little curvy and you have to trace the waste line also now we are allowing the seam allowance at the side we are allowing 1 inch at the waist line we are allowing half an inch and at the center it's it is half an inch and draw the curve of the side seam as well as the waist line and draw the center front line and uh, already it's been marked as fold so it is not necessary to give the seam allowance on the center line but it is be necessary to give the hem allowance at the bottom can be half an inch draw the out bottom line with the hip curve bottom seam line with the hip curve or with the free line but both the line of the shell length and the seam line seam allowance line has to be parallel and close the pattern and keep it aside now We are going to do the same thing for the back also. Pin up the fast pattern onto the white sheet with the push pins. or keep wait in our to avoid this page trace the back neck and trace all the outline of the pattern of side seam and the bottom by fixing the each and every panel along with the white sheet by bond place weight or put the pins both pins in order to avoid the slippage of the slashes you can paste the cello tape also to push in the slash on place and the spread is as equal to the front you can design the spread as your design as per the design it can be much flared or little flared the space between each panel can be 4 inches 3 inches place and position the panels and then draw the lines
when you are doing, when you are following this method, automatically the top line will become a curve line instead of a straight line. We cut the chest line as a straight line, but it is changed as a curve line. As the same, the bottom also have a curve. You trace the center back line as a straight line and then draw perpendicular line at the bottom. The perpendicular has to follow for a little while, that's 3 inches or something. And we should allow the seam allowance at the waistline as half an inch. And the center back, if there is no placket, it is not necessary to allow the seam allowance. But for the test fitting, they are allowing, uh, we are allowing one inch at the back to have a straight fall. And the side seam should also be trued as a straight line. The side seam line should also be trued like a straight line with the use of a scale. And uh, it is must to follow the perpendicular at the bottom. And the seam allowance at the side is 1 inch. And draw one inch allowance with the use of scale. And extend it for the hem allowance also. And draw perpendicular line for the center back bottom. To the extension till the first panel, then you should draw the curve at the bottom as a continuous curve with the use of hip curve. The learner must to use the tools to draw a proper curve. The hip curve will fit in the bottom to give a proper curve to it. Again, we should allow one inch elements for the bottom hem. Mark the seam elements of one inch parallel to the bottom line. And draw a parallel line to the curve for one inch. Again, you should use the proper tool there. Now, you should uh, write the information as production pattern and cut number will be decided in this stage because we are deciding the open and fold. So, so we have to decide whether the back is to be cut 2 or a cut 1 or something. The size and the Cut pieces has to be specified now. This pattern is called as the production pattern which we allow the seam allowance. And we have to mark the basic notches, trace the basic notches, that's a hip notch, another thing. Now we are going to develop the production pattern for the bodies. First place the front on the white sheet and uh, paste the pattern or fix the pattern along with the white sheet.
this is to be done to avoid the slippage fix in place then you should draw or trace the outline and you should mark the notches of the bus point and uh, trace the shoulder neckline as per the pattern and when we are tracing the armhole we should have to give the we should have to do the drawing and the armhole and allow seam allowance of 1 inch at the sides and half an inch at the shoulder allow 3/8 to half an inch seam allowance at the armhole also after drawing the curve so whenever wherever you are closing the dots the the line has to be trued even if it is a straight line or a curve line the the outline has to be trued then only the dotting take or the elimination can fit well draw the seam allowance of half an inch at neckline also use proper tool to draw the curves half an inch to 3/4 of an inch can be allowed as seam allowance at the yoke bottom and after that you should write the cut number based on the opening the same thing has to be done for the back yoke also first fix fix the pattern along with the white sheets at uh, at the outline of the pattern in order to avoid the slippage after fixing the pattern off on to the fresh white sheet the seam allowance to be allowed to make it as a production pattern from the working pattern so if it is on full it's not necessary to give the solid seam allowance at the center back but for the test fit usually they used to allow 1 inch at the center back either it's a opening or not because the fall and the drape would have been better when the fold is been 1 inch at the center of back and the center front so the allowance of the armhole neckline bottom and the shoulder is half an inch and at the side seam it has to be 1 inch so you are allowing half an inch seam allowance at the shoulders always the seam allowance should be parallel to the basic curve 
So if you wanted to mark half an inch, the entire curve should be marked with half an inch allowance along with the curve, then only the parallel curve will form. You know how to draw the parallel curve. So mark the measurements by keeping the tape or the scale to be perpendicular to the basic curve. Autom automatically the curve will form as parallel. Mark all the details, the center front, center back and cut number and the notches, seam notches and balancing notches to the pattern. Now your basic patterns are done, you are going to trace it on the fabric. The fabric should be ironed properly. The test fit fabric can be with the muslin or with the poplin. The poplin, the cotton should be your, your stiff cotton. Then only the drape and the fall can be identified properly. So first finish the ironing in the fabric and uh, trace the outline. Tracing of outline can be done by carbon tracing or trace the pattern with the use of tracing wheel to get the impression. The other method which is we, they have kept the pattern below the fabric and uh, they are tracing the outline by seeing the outline of the pattern through the fabric. So ultimately we have to trace it, the tra tracing method can be different for individuals. The proper method is to trace with the carbon sheet or, or with the use of tracing wheel and if in the case of transparent fabric it could have been traced in this way also. So after tracing it you should, tracing has to be done for both stitch line and cut line. Stitch line is to follow the stitch and cut line is to follow the cut. And in the case of test fit, both the line has to be traced and also the information has to be, has to be written on the traced component also. So the test fit should have all the information in all the panels. Write all the information as per the production pattern. So we have traced the front bodies. Now we are going to take, trace the back borders and while tracing also you should be careful to follow the grain line. Grain line should be parallel to the selvage and the centre front and centre back should fall parallel to the selvage or to the bar. Place the fabric without the wrinkles, release the wrinkles. And you should be careful not to avoid the bowing, twisting and everything because the cut panel should have a neat clean fall and it should be neatly ironed, it then only it will be easy to pin up also. So doing iron will give a proper finish and the excess has to be released towards the side. The fabric should not have any excess within the pattern and it should not be pulled also. So flatten the fabric onto the pattern sheet to avoid the excess and draw the outline. So now we are tracing the back 
along with the seam line the stitch line and the seam line is being traced they are tracing by following the lines on the pattern when the fabric allows to see the pattern outline then it is easy to trace also now we trace the outline of the bottom the neckline the armhole and the side seam also you should mark the grain line this has been done for the test fit that's why you are marking the marks on on the fabric you are writing the information on the fabric so when you are when you have pinned and made the test fit you could understand what panel is this how to how to understand and analyze the fit of it so it can't be reverse it can't be like bowing and and uh, and pull and all so the fabric should also be straight by following this grain line and all the information has to be presented in the fabric also then only when there won't be any confusion in assembly as well as to understand the fit cut and the outline of the pattern neck bottom shoulder armhole and side seam the same thing should be done for the front part also cut on the outline the cut should be made on the cutting line which is being traced so we are going to make the uh, test fit only for one side of the form so we made one side where the one inch allowance has been allowed at the center front and the center back now we are going to trace the skirt uh, bottom panel which is a single panel should be on fold trace the back bottom panel sorry bottom piece at front and the back while tracing also you can use the proper tool to draw the straight line and the curve line draw the bottom line and the seam allowance 
as we given the seam elements for the bodies at the center back one inch and all over the area as half an inch you have to allow the same elements at here also the side the waistline the bottom side waistline are been given with half an inch and the bottom could have been one inch Draw the side seam line, center back line, sorry, center back line. And uh, write the details, the style number, cut number, name, everything. The center should allow one inch. I mark the fold also. We are allowing one inch to test the fall of it, but actually it has to be on fold. And mark the grain line also. The grain line has to be marked longest line. Start to cut the fabric. Cut all around the pattern end on the cutting line. The side seam line. And the waistline. Cutting can be done uh, as per your convenience and uh, the bottom hem should also be cut properly. I should also trace the back piece as same as the front. Allow one inch at the center back and half an inch, half an inch curve as parallel to the waistline. The side seam line is also a straight line. Mark the side seam points and with the scale, you have to mark you know how much allowance is being allowed on the pattern. The same allowance has to be taken on the fabric also and the exact curve at the bottom.
right center back and total detail onto that components also and cut on the outline the hem allowance and the side seam allowance should be the same as actually all the allowances should be same as the front Make the cut on the cutting line and, and separate the component. Now we are going to assemble the test fit. First, pin the side seam of the bodies or yoke. By matching at the side seam, the front fold should fall on the back. At the same, the shoulder rough an inch also be folded at the front and it has to be placed at the back and pin the pins. The sharp end has to come towards the back. Pin the shoulders. Attach the side seam of the back, back and front or the seam allowance has to be followed exactly and pin it. the fit will become correct. Pin it with the even gaps and uh, the tension of pinning should be even don't pull any fabric the both layers should have a moderate tension then only the seam bouncing and stretching won't happen you can't stretch much also while pinning at the side seam the center front is a straight line and the side seam is a curve line you know what are the difficulty you face when you are selecting this kind of fabric when the design is flared and fitted.
attached till the end by pinning. Uh, the notches could help uh, to match uh, the panels, the front and the back as in position, follow always the notches. Uh, then only that uh, they, there won't be any excess or pull. So you should follow the adjoining notch and match the side seam. Now the front and back bottom piece has been done then you are going to attach the bodies on the chest line. Match the side seam and uh, start to pin on the chest line to match with the uh, chest line and the front line and the seam matching. If you mark the bus notches, you could have matched the bus notch also to get the proper fit and an attachment. So, starts from the side C. The pinning should be towards down. The sharp end should face towards the down. The front is pinned, as the same the back should also be pinned from the side seam by folding the body seam and placing onto the bottom piece. The seam elements has to be maintained properly, match the center back and center and the pin has to face towards the down. Now the pinning is done. So it suggests your bodies and uh, bottom piece kind of a thing. Your kamis, the yoke kamis. It's a flared yoke kamis. So you should iron it properly. The next, if you want, you are going to do the test fit. After pinning, the garment has to be ironed. Before starting cutting, also the fabric has to be ironed. Now the pinned garment has to be ironed properly. Wherever the crease line, the crease line has to be creased properly. So the drape and the fit of the garment can be analyzed. The flow should also be analyzed by the proper iron. So all the crease line of the center front and the center back has to be creased properly and the fabric has to be clean and flat. That's why we are ironing it. When the fabric is crisp and neat, then analysis could have been easy and we can easily understand how the grain is falling, the drape and the fall of the garment. So far we, have, we are done this for the 
test fit. The test fit we made fitted on the format because the pattern is being made for the format only. We fitted at the neckline that uh, one inch below from the neck and half an inch below from the center back neck. Actually, it is a boat neck that uh, it won't be so so much deeper than the uh, front neck and the back neck. So we we designed as uh, uh, one two three fourth of an inch below from the center back and that's the, and you have to pin on the position. And when we are checking the fit, that uh, center back is falling on the straight line, and the shoulders are fitting, and the side seams are a little much uh, wider, and it gives the flare the uh, bottom also and uh, the front we have made the yoke till the chest line so if the design wants to be at the ampere line or above the chest line we can do the um, yoke on that particular line but we designed at the chest line it's been fitting at the um, chest line properly and uh, and the flare is uh, as per the design and the side seam the side view that uh, it has the ease but it has been fitting at the side seam properly and uh, the excess of flare has been at the sides also. Though the design is not having the sleeve, you should make the armhole facing uh, for the front and back separately and the neck facing for the front and back separately. So it, it's going to be like an uh, A-line dress. Alien, alien dress like uh, the western wear but uh, this is going to be the kameez you can wear it with a churidar and uh, you can make any uh, applique or uh, design embellishment and the chest also and uh, usually the opening can also be designed with the center back or the shoulder or the front also you can have the half placket open at the front or at the back zipper open also uh, it's not necessary to have the placket uh, so longer because the flareness is starting from the chest line. The placket length could have been one inch below the chest line. So it's not necessary to give too long up to the uh, center back waist. And in the shoulder also you can give the placket by opening the shoulder and wearing inside because the chest measurement is the maximum measurement. So it can be wearable uh, through the neck also, through the bodies also. Even without the placket, it has been easy to wear. So uh, the armhole finish and the neck finish has to be taken care by giving the facing or with the piping or any lace attachment or something as per the design.